And we're back with a quick channel update. Uh, first things first, I want to cover the next game that's up on the list. And according to the Patreon, they have voted for Subnautica. Just by a very thin margin. There is a possibility at the last minute I might switch to Cult of Lamb, but I, I don't think that's that's very likely, considering, you know, that it's, it's going to be soon that Subnautica... I'm going to have to start actually playing it. But uh, barring any unforeseen consequences, Subnautica is next up on the list. However, that brings us up to a question of what should be the other game. I normally like to keep two in rotation. However, there's some news out there. Today, at 4.25pm, Tywin has released this. Tywin Sylvester is the guy who does RimWorld. And he has released this. RimWorld Anomaly. Now, the, the, the DLC is not out. But according to him, this is going to have uh, face squealing flesh beasts, invisible hunters, mind controlling parasites, mad cultists, and word swal world swallowing abyssal darkness. Capture monsters in your containment facilities, perform psychic rituals, and survive the madness. Releases in one month along with update 1.5. So this, this is going on my to playlist as soon as it comes out. So I need to pick a game that won't last me more than a month of playtime so that when this drops, I am ready to jump in straight away. Subnautica looks to be only about 40, 50 hours, well, maybe 80 hours, but that should suffice. We should be good to go. Which means for the next game, this is the current list I'm looking at. The thing is, there should be a few others in there, like Astrodeer, Space Engineers, and The Forest, but I took those out on the grounds that I don't want to do two survival crafters in a row again. Uh, last time I ended up doing Raft, quite enjoyable, and Medieval Dynasty, also quite enjoyable. Both of them were survival crafters, and at some point I find myself running from a boar with a bow in my hand, in both of them somehow. A bow I had made myself, and iron arrows I had crafted myself, so it seemed a little bit too, yeah, samey. I'm not pulling the names of these games out of a hat. The way it works is all the games are pulled off Steam, basically, which I know is a little bit of a limiting factor. There is games that exist that are not on Steam, but it's just easier to do it this way because you can take their most recent, recent rating, their overall rating, uh, their year of release, and how many reviews they have, and just bundle it into a score. Max score is 45, uh, which is if the game was released this year, has over 100,000 reviews, then all of the reviews are, the most recent and overall reviews are all overwhelmingly positive. That's the only way you can get this. Somehow the Resident Evil 4 remake or remaster has, has gotten that. It's uh, it's strange, but yeah, it is what it is. This spreadsheet was very kindly provided by a viewer, Matthew. They went through a lot of work to pull all this uh, information out of the Steam database. There's a, oh, there's a user end thing you can do, but... They basically pulled all of this data and stuck it into a handy-dandy spreadsheet for me so I could rank literally all the games on Steam. Now, there's a few side things, like some games are free and they automatically, well, not automatically, but they generally get very favourable reviews because, well, if it's free, people are more likely to give it better reviews and things like that. So a little bit of filtering is required. But by and large, this is, like, there's some really good games in here. Like Baldur's Gate 3, Lethal Company, Vampire Survivor... Battle Bit Remastered? Oh yeah, Dave the Diver is up here, Hogwarts Legacy, like a lot of these, like Raft, right there, Elden Ring. This is a pretty good system, in my opinion. One of the options I gave Matthew as payment was that he could pick a game that I would have to play, and they went with that option. I mean, don't get me wrong, I also offered them cold hard cash just in case, but they, what they picked was Medieval Dynasty, which is how we ended up with Medieval Dynasty on the channel. Quite a good pick, it also comes in at 282 on the list. But you got to remember, like, a bunch of this stuff, uh, a bunch of this stuff is not going to end up being played on the grounds that, well, I'm not going to do a, let's say, a platformer. Platformers are not something I'm really into. Uh, also, I believe Don't Starve is in there, and Don't Starve just has so many expansions that trying to get into it would be absolutely mind-numbing. I mean, do you start with the basic one and then go into all the expansions? How bored are people going to be while it takes me, you know, several months to get into it? For example, Slay the Spire here is a game that's been done to death and there's not really much I can add to that. I mean, it might be fun to play for a bit, but I'm not really into the card battlers that much. There's People Playground, but that's just a game where you, well, build stuff to shoot and cause things to explode. Not really going to be into that. Uh, Need for Speed, I'm not into racing games at all, so that kind of, there's a lot of things here that are going to get ruled out. Horizon Zero Dawn here, for example, is a bit like Senua's Sacrifice in the way, except with robot dinosaurs and things like that that you can fight. It's it's cool, fun to play, I just don't think it really suits the channel in general, and it's more of a game you kind of sit down, hammer away for a bit, and then come back. It's not really the kind of one I can sink my teeth into. But just as an aside here, look at this, we've got Crusader Kings 3, uh, Borderlands 3, Age of Empires 3, Grand Theft Auto uh, 4, Doom Eternal, oh, Pizza Tower, Dyson Sphere Program, Half-Life Alex, Devil May Cry 5, uh, Dead Cells, Rimworld, Subnautica, Se Sekiro, Balloons TD. Like, the amount of games that float up to the top on this listing, I'm quite happy with it. Oh, uh, li link, link to the description, so if you want to have a copy of this file yourself, go ahead. Big shout out again to Matthew for doing all the work on this. This is just so handy for finding new games to play. 
As a side note here, there's three games right beside each other right here called The Outlast Trials, Escape the Backrooms, and Devour, which all seem to be sort of psychological horror where you're trying to escape or get out of somewhere while you're being chased by things you can't fight, so you have to run, hide, snell, sneak, sneak, stealth, all that kind of stuff. And all of them are right here in this section, right beside House Flipper. House Flipper is a game where you repair houses and sell them for more money to buy more houses to repair them and sell them. I don't know why those are all there and Age of Empires 4 Anniversary Edition is in the middle. But that just seems really strange that there's three games with all with the exact same pr premise surrounded by Age of Empires and House Flipper. Also, they're just above Frostpunk for some strange reason. And where is it? Dark Souls. Yeah, so maybe all of these are just like our games. I, I would almost be interested in playing just one of those to see what it's like. Uh, maybe just a quick video on one. Uh, m maybe as a bonus sometime. As another, another little aside, this here is SCP Secret Laboratory. I have never heard of this game. There's a few games on this list that I'd never heard of that I found quite interesting because of how highly ranked they were. Um, I know, weird ranking system. But this is SCP Secret Laboratory, which appears to be a game about uh, the SCP Foundation. I don't know if you're familiar with that one. It's a containment thing. It's based on a, another game series. But this is massively ranked really highly, despite looking like, well... To be indelicate about it, it looks a bit like ass. That looks like very old school graphics. But somehow, this game has almost 200,000 reviews. It's been since 2017, and it has remained a very positive review front on recent and all reviews. That's kind of crazy. And I've never even heard of this. This is nowhere on my radar. There's just little games like that that you come across because you're like, what, what's that doing there? I mean, there's plenty of uh, common ones that you see around like Half-Life 2, Half-Life 1, Portal. All of those have shown up on the list as well. I expected those. This one had no idea it even existed. So I started playing Helldivers 2 recently. I kind of got sucked into that. It looks, it, it, come on, it's an awful lot of fun and it's so close to Starship Troopers. You, you just, I couldn't help myself. Uh, at the same time, I did get a few comments from people wondering, uh, what are you doing playing first-person shooters? I thought that wasn't your thing. And it's like, it, it's not that it's not my thing, or it is my thing. When it comes to gaming for me, I have a, a pattern I've noticed over time. I usually start playing a game, and then either after somewhere between a month to nine months, I sort of burn out. I'll, like, I'll play it for a month to nine months, and then I'll either move on to another game. Sometimes I'll play a whole genre and just play multiple back-to-back -back games of the same genre, and then move on. But say, back in the day, which, oh god, these, some of these games are going to be pretty old, like, I used to play a lot of Counter-Strike, uh, well, Dave Defeat, oh my god, I sunk so many hours into Wolfenstein enemy territory. That's a, that's a, a deep cut, that's really old, but, uh, that was one of the first ones where you had objective-based things, like, you would have to stay near a tank to make the tank move, uh, you would have engineer classes that would repair bridges, they would have people that would throw grenades to call in airstrikes, that type of stuff, like, that was amazing for the time. Oh, Quake! I'd almost blanked on Quake. Quake, Quake 3, Unreal Tournament. Yeah, those were the days. So uh, what happened was, at some point, I just kind of got burnt out on shooters. I mean, by the time Call of Duty hit, it was just, uh, for me, more of the same. I I'd seen that same sort of formula. I'm sure Call of Duty refined it down a lot, but I think that was more when it broke mainstream. Actually, no, maybe it was Halo. Yeah, I was around for maybe the start of Halo, and then uh, after that, I just, uh, I'd, I'd been burnt out on shooters at that point. Same happened to me with the, the real-time strategy games. I played them... All oh, a long, long time ago, like uh, Brood Wars, uh, Red Alert Tiberian Sun, uh, Red Alert 2, Supreme Commander, Dawn of War, uh, like, there was all of them. I went through the whole lot of them. The RTSs, though, kind of, well, died out. There was no real major moves there, but then I kind of got into the Total War stuff. So you have uh, Total War, War Medieval, Medieval 2, uh, Shogun. Um, I kind of got out of those after a while as well, but it's not like I've, I've only played Colony Sims. In fact, when it comes to things like say, Octagon included, I think that my gateway drug was Factorio. So it was sort of Factorio first, then that got me into Oxygen Not Included, and then since Oxygen Not Included, then that got me into RimWorld, and, you know, it, there's, there's consistent patterns there somewhere, I'm sure. I don't know exactly how to describe what breaks me on a game in the end, or what makes me stop playing, but I'll try as best I can, and the, the best example I can think of off the top of my head is uh, Dawn of War. It was a real-time strategy game back in the day, it was quite fun. It's set in the Warhammer universe, you know, big stompy robots, lots of shooting and stuff. And what was happening was I was basically just coming back from work. I'd sit dead and I would play for hours on end, you know, go to sleep, wake up, and you do the same again. And after a while, I hadn't really noticed it, but it could have become a job. Uh, you, you get to the point where you're good enough, you're in like the top 200. I'd play random. I got to about the top 200, which, okay, let's not get it straight. That's that's not that great on, on Dawn of War. It didn't exactly have the most massive player base. But you get to top 200, you're having... 
but you're not really enjoying it anymore. The problem with it is when you get that high up, it's all about just getting your timings down and, you know, knowing the meta, uh, recognizing what they're doing. You have to just, like, be slightly better than them. Just ever so infinitesimally better. And all you're doing is grinding down, getting that extra second or two, and then that's kind of how it stopped being fun for me. When it start like, the bit I like about games is when you can do big twists and have fun, and I think that's why turn-based strategy games, like, I used to love those, and they, those lasted a lot longer for me on the grounds that you could do really crazy things and you had time to think about it, and, you know, that's sort of why it appeals to me more in RimWorld as well. You can pause the game and you can make crazy colonies, you can do fun fight things, you can, there's all sorts of crazy shenanigans you can get up to. And it's not just a gradual case of refining improvement, it's massive sweeping changes where you're running a cannibal colony on an ice sheet, or, you know, just random stuff like that. Or maybe you decide to run your base in oxygen on it on magma you're shipping in from other planets, or you're just using it as a giant desalinator. Right? There's great big changes as opposed to minor incremental ones, and that's where shooters sort of ended up for me after a while. So, right now I quite enjoy playing Helldivers too, but that will only last, well... 80, maybe 100 hours. After a while, you kind of hit that point of just refinement, uh, then I'll kind of lose interest, based on past preferences, I would say. Right now, though, people are, like, falling all over themselves to be super nice to this company, which is great to see. It's nice to see a games company that's in the news for being liked, which is kind of impressive. Usually all the news out of the games company stuff is pretty depressing, but, uh, yeah, everyone's super happy with them, but, uh, th this is a pattern. It repeats itself all the time. Company comes along, makes a great game, it does wonderfully well, and then it either goes one of two ways. They make the next game and it's not as good and people get meaner with them because you're no longer a small company, you should be able to do this better, and then they usually either go under and get bought out, or two, they get big enough and then some other company comes along and buys them out for an enormous amount of money and then cashes in their reputation by doing heartless crash cabs until they eventually run their reputation to the ground. It's a bit like, like the Mafia, I suppose. Have you ever watched Mafia movies or TV shows? They'll, like, get someone... They'll give them a loan or something to run a restaurant, and then when they're running the restaurant, they take out loans against it, and they basically use the reputation of the guy who is technically running the restaurant. They run his reputation to the ground with the loans and insurance stuff, and then they burn the place down and take the cash. They basically destroy someone else's reputation to make money out of it, and that's what you do in the games industry. Some, some company has a really good reputation, you buy up their name, you say you'll be fine and treat them good, and then you slowly, you know, cash in on that reputation over the next five to ten years until all the goodwill is gone, and then you repeat it with the next company. And, of course, someone in that company or a group in that company will probably leave because they don't like it, and they'll go off and form their own company, who might make a really, really great game. And then they'll get bought up, and the same cycle starts all over again. And I can't even blame them. I mean, imagine you're the CEO of a games company, and, uh... You're, you're getting flack from some randomer who's like, oh, you, you, you did something in this game that I don't like, uh, and I hate you now. And, and you, you deal with that all the time. After a while, you're like, you know what? I am just going to take this giant fat check someone's offering me and then go retire to an island. Uh, I'll shack up with some supermodel and I'll trade in for a new one every five years so long as I sign a decent prenup. And, and your choice is doing that or dealing with some people on the internet being angry at you over some changes you made to a game. I don't know. It's just, uh, it, call that my prediction for the future. I'll only be doing about one more video on Helldivers 2 anyway. The game's pretty fun, but uh, I I'm not really the best at running around and trying to keep people entertained while shooting stuff. I usually have to concentrate on the shooting, otherwise I just end up, you know, getting squished by bugs. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'll still get squished by bugs, but less often if I'm not talking all the time. Finished up on Raft recently, quite enjoyed it, but I definitely think it's a one-and-done game for me. Uh, I think the good parts about it was it's really fun, easy and intuitive to make the Raft. They give you... they slowly meter out the stuff you should get over time, which oh, I'm not sure I enjoyed that. I kind of I kind of would have liked to be able to max out my Raft a little bit before the end, or a, a few times before the end. It's just, you don't get some stuff until the very, very end of the game, at which point, what am I supposed to do? Build an even bigger, better Raft? Uh, I mean, I could, it's just uh, I felt no motivation to do so because there was no rest of the storyline to do and the mechanics were not really as in-depth. Like, if you do, say, From the Depths, which is an entire game based around building ships, submarines, planes, and all that stuff, and the guns to go on them and get into fights, then, yeah, you can spend hours and hours just building and designing stuff, but I just never found the point in Raft of, like, okay, once I'm done, I could make the ultimate Raft. It's just I didn't really feel motivated to do so. There was no real need to. I don't know. Probably just me. Also, the, the mining thing, if you want to mine any iron ores or sand or clay or even, like, you need the sand to make glass, to make biofuel, there was a bunch of things that you have to just keep doing again and again, like repetitive actions, and after a while I was just like, nope, nope, this is just, just too much, too much for me. Still love the game at the end of the day, but it's definitely a one and done. Medieval Dynasty had a very similar game. You're doing a lot of handcrafting, you know, bow and arrow, shooting stuff, getting chased by boars, the usual uh, malarkey, but there was an awful lot more automation that. You could hire villagers to do tasks and provide resources for you. I, of course, did it 
assways and didn't actually put enough villagers into getting wood and stone at the start. Probably, if I had to do it all over again, I definitely would have hired a lot more villagers to do that. Uh, as well as that, I think the game is more targeted towards people who want to make extremely pretty villages with lots of trellises and like there was a whole set of decor decorations and things like that. I didn't even look at those. I, I mean, I saw they were there, but I didn't unlock any of them because I didn't care about the decorations. It was more about getting things finished. But if you want to make yourself a beautiful, pristine village, get lots of, like, fireplaces and, you know, areas for your villagers to hang out in, you can totally do that. There is some amazing posts on Reddit. That stuff is just, you know, the people have spent hundreds of hours making themselves the perfect, beautiful, little, pristine villages around the place. Medieval Dynasty? I could see myself playing that one again, though I changed one of the difficulty modifiers. Uh, the base one is you get three days per season. Four seasons per year, so that gives you 12 days. I would cut it down to one day per season. That would make, that would pile on a whole bunch more pressure. As well as that you're far more likely to see your heirs grow up and for your villagers to actually have kids and your villagers to grow old and die and it would, it would add on a whole layer of extra stuff and plus you could, you know, breed up a whole generation of villagers who are actually better trained up. It would, uh, I, I think it's called Medieval Dynasty, it should, I, I, I almost think that that was their original intent was to make the seasons one day long but then they maybe got pushed back in early development, I, I don't know, just, just guessing here. But I think that was probably what they intended originally, but they ended up changing it over time due to fan feedback. Again, still just just wildly guessing. But yeah, I could, I could see myself going back there again. So I suppose to sum everything up, uh, I'll be doing one more video on Helldivers uh, on, on Friday, and then Monday morning it's going to be straight into Subnautica. And then Tuesday will be, well, whatever gets picked in the next poll. I am curious to see what shows up. Judging by the past polling, the most likely contenders are Cult of the Lamb and Crusader Kings 3. I am really not looking forward to either of those. That's going to be a fun one. I mean, not looking forward to it in a good way, so to speak. I mean, I'm never going to play a game if I don't think I'm going to enjoy it. And if I did hate a game, I probably would just stop playing it. So far, I've uh, been quite enjoying the picks that have shown up. Anyway, uh, I'm going to cut this out here before I ramble even more. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Good luck. ETA T minus 10 seconds. This is Pelican 1. I have visual on the extraction zone. Pelican 1 landing sequence initiated. Watch where you're standing. Countdown initiated. Stand by for takeoff. Extraction complete. Pelican 1 beginning ascent. 